குட் மார்னிங் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு அவர் பயாலஜி கிளாஸ் இந் த ப்ரீவியஸ் கிளாஸ் வி லேர்ன் வாட் இஸ் டிரான்ஸ்போர்ட்டேஷன் இன் பிளான்ஸ் மீன்ஸ் ஆஃப் டிரான்ஸ்போர்ட் இன் பிளான்ஸ் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆஃப் ரூட் ஹேர் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் பாத்வேஸ் ஆஃப் வாட்டர் எக்ஸெட்ரா டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு லேர்ன் அபவுட் டிரான்ஸ்பிரேஷன் வாட் இஸ் டிரான்ஸ்பிரேஷன் யூ ஆல்ரெடி ஸ்டடிட் இன் நைன்த் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் டிரான்ஸ்பிரேஷன் இஸ் த எவாப்ரேஷன் ஆஃப் வாட்டர் இன் பிளான்ஸ் through stomata in the leaves that is the loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plant body is called transpiration let us see this video transpiration in plants all plants from the smallest weed to the tallest tree which is several meters tall need water plants are not mobile How do they manage to get water right up to the tallest branch? The roots of plants absorb water and mineral salts from the soil through the root hairs by the process of osmosis. Only a small percentage of this water is used by the plant. The rest gets evaporated from the surface of leaves. This evaporation of water from the plant is called transpiration. Let us perform a simple experiment to show that transpiration takes place in plants. Take a medium-sized, well-watered potted plant. Cover it with a transparent polythene bag A and tie its mouth at the base of the stem. Next to the potted plant, place an empty polythene bag B with its mouth tied. Expose this setup to sunlight for an hour or two. Drops of water will appear on the inner side of the bag A. The polythene bag B will not show any water drops in it. The leaves give off water vapor and due to condensation of the water vapor, tiny drops of water get collected. This experiment shows that plants give out water to the atmosphere through transpiration. There are three types of transpiration depending on the site of transpiration. They are stomatal transpiration, lenticular transpiration and cuticular transpiration. Stomatal transpiration. Stomata are openings on the leaf surface through which transpiration takes place. The stomata are surrounded by guard cells which help the stomata to open and close. Now we can clearly understand that transpiration takes place through stomata in the leaves. We are going to learn the structure of stomata. You can see the picture. Stomata are tiny pores present in the epidermal surface of the leaves. Stomata are tiny pores present in the epidermal surface of the leaves these pores are very minute that we need a microscope to see them they are microscopic so we can need a microscope to see them the pores are guarded by two kidney shaped cells known as guard cells these guard cells help in opening and closing of stomata the pores are guarded by two kidney shaped cells known as guard cells the inner wall of guard cell towards the stomata is thicker as compared to the outer wall that is the inner wall of guard cell is thicker than the outer wall students now you read the notes along with me stomata stomata are tiny pores present in the epidermal surface of the leaves these pores are guarded by two kidney shaped cells known as guard cells the inner wall of guard cells towards the stomata is thicker as compared to the outer walls can you understand next opening and closing of stomata stomata are opened in the day time and are closed at night stomata are opened in the day time and are closed at night opening and closing of stomata is due to the change in the turgidity of the guard cells turgidity means swollen or stiffness uh, you can see the picture during the day time 
when water enters into the gut cell they become turgid and the stoma open stoma singular stomata plural when water enters into the gut cells they become turgid and the stoma open when gut cells lose water it becomes flaccid flaccid means soft or shrink when the gut cells lose water it becomes flaccid that is when water moves from the gut cells to adjacent cells or neighboring cells the gut cell become flaccid let us see this video then we can understand it clearly process of stomatal transpiration most of the transpiration takes place through stomata stomata are microscopic parts consisting of two kidney shaped gut cells in stomatal transpiration water vapor moves through the stomata of leaf water absorbed by the roots rises through the stem and reaches the tissues of the leaves through veins a large number of spongy mesophyll cells in the leaf have their surfaces exposed to the intercellular spaces the surfaces of the cells give out some of the water which forms a thin film the water from this film evaporates and the water vapor formed saturates in the intercellular spaces this vapor then diffuses into the other connecting intercellular spaces and finally reaches substomatal space from where it escapes out through the stomata stomata are absent in the submerged hydrophytes that is hydrilla valesneria mechanism of opening and closing of stomata transpiration occurs as long as the stomata are open it stops when they are closed open and closed stomata closed stomata flaccid gut cell stoma closed stoma open turgid gut cell thick cell wall thin cell wall the opening and closing of stomata depend upon the turgid or flaccid state of gut cells when the gut cells are in the flaccid state stomatal aperture closes during daytime as a result of photosynthesis as the gut cells have chloroplast concentration of carbohydrates rises leading to osmotic uptake of water by the gut cells to swell since the wall of gut cells towards stomatal opening is thick while outer convex wall is thin inflow of water in the gut cells causes them to bulge outwards thus widening the stomatal opening when the osmotic pressure of the gut cells becomes lower during night the water leaves these cells due to exosmosis and moves to the neighboring epidermal cells having cell sap of higher concentration the gut cells become flaccid and shrink and the stomatal aperture closes <laughs> students i hope you understand about opening and closing of stomata then explain the mechanism of opening and closing of stomata for this question you refer these points i already explained okay transpiration pull transpiration pull is the biological process by which the plants draw or suck the water in the upward direction the plants suck the water in the upward direction then only it can prepare the air food because for photosynthesis water is essential if it is too hot water evaporates from the mesophyll cells present in the leaves through stomata if it is too hot or the wind is uh, heavy wind means 
water evaporates from the mesophyll cells present in the leaves through stomata when water evaporates from the mesophyll cells automatically this lowers the water concentration in the mesophyll cells when water evaporates automatically it lowers the water concentration in the mesophyll cells as a result more water is drawn into the cells from the xylem automatically as a result more water is drawn into the cells from xylem present in the veins by osmosis what is osmosis we already studied what is osmosis movement of water molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration so the water from the xylem moves into the gut cells as water is lost from the leaves pressure is created at the top of the pull the water from the xylem to mesophyll cells this is called as transpiration pull this is called as transpiration pull now you can see this video then you can understand about transpiration pull transpiration pull the loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plants like stomata of leaves is known as transpiration transpiration pull means drawing up of water from the roots to the plant mechanisms of transpiration evaporation of water from the leaves into the atmosphere results in a decrease in the water potential of the epidermal cells the lost water in the leaf is replaced by the xylem vessel a suction is created which helps to pull water from xylem cells of roots and hence helps to absorb more water thus the transpiration pull helps in absorption and movement of water and dissolved minerals in plants during the day when the stomata are open you know this upward pull of water is just like the upward pull which makes a drink rise in the straw when we drink juice through it when you suck the straw the liquid enters your mouth and the empty space in the straw is filled with more liquid this is how we drink the juice with a straw during the night the effect of root pressure is important for absorption and movement of water and to dissolve minerals in plants transpiration is affected by some factors external factors and also internal factors external factors are temperature light humidity and wind speed if it is high temperature or very hot or if the wind speed is high means the transport the transpiration rate will be increased high temperature and the speed of wind is high means the transpiration rate will be increased internal factors also affect the transpiration they are number and distribution of stomata percentage percentage of open stomata water status of the plant and canopy canopy means shade these are the internal factors affecting the uh, transpiration pull importance of transpiration transpiration creates transpirational pull for transport of water then only the roots can absorb water and supplies water for photosynthesis uh, this it transports minerals from soil to all parts of the plant for the physiological functions of the plant and also it cools the surface of the leaves by evaporation so we can feel cool under the trees it keeps the cell turgid hence it maintain their shape so the plants and plant parts can stand erect for transportation in plants xylem and phloem are essential xylem always conducts water phloem conducts food the prepared food from the leaves xylem conducts water in unidirectional in xylem the movement is always unidirectional from root to the tip of the plant but in phloem the movement of food is both upwards and downwards so it is bidirectional this is 
the bidirectional is depending upon the season or the plant's need that's all about transpiration students do the given assignment okay thank you